What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's some of my early thoughts ahead of the game week seven deadline. So I'm going to go through some of the watch list players, then some of my notes from the weekend, and obviously give you my opinion. If you do enjoy the video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And also make sure to check out Fantasy Football Hub. They've got a seven day free trial at the moment and 30% off. They still have their win your mini league or get your money back offer on, but that is going to stop after the game week seven deadline. So if you want to make use of that, now is the time to get signed up. There are things that you need to do over the season to be eligible for that. All the terms and conditions are in the description below as well. But a good time to get signed up and make use of their tools. If you want to check that out, link's in the description below. Otherwise, let's jump into it. So let's start with Carlton Morris. He's going to be very popular this week because Luton have their double game week, which is Everton away and Burnley at home. Plus, Nicholas Jackson just got his fifth yellow card. Lots of people still own him, and he's going to be suspended for game week seven, obviously back from game week eight onwards. But he's not someone you want to, are going to want to hold on to long term anyway. So should you go for the Carlton Morris pump? Because let's be fair, Luton don't look very good. They're almost certainly going to get relegated. I'm sorry, Luton fans. It's just the way it is. Obviously, great achievement to get up to the Premier League. I'm not convinced they're going to last, although things could change over the season. And Morris himself hasn't been great from open play. If you look at his underlying stats, 0.15 expected goals per 90. That doesn't include penalties. And 0.16 expected assists. But he is nailed on, and he is on penalties. And that's why he's got 5.2 points per match so far this season. Ultimately, I kind of look at it as a pretty nice punt where you can't lose anything from getting rid of Jackson. He's literally not going to play. And in terms of buying different forwards, I don't think there's anyone that's kind of must own this week or maybe even game week eight as well. If you look at Alvarez, for example, who I just bought in, and a lot of people obviously did that last week, we did that because one, obviously we were kind of sick of Nicholas Jackson, but also Man City had Forrest at home. So if you're looking at him now, You've lost that fixture, and Wolves away in game week seven isn't bad, but in game week eight, it's Arsenal away, and that is going to be a little bit trickier, although obviously Declan Rice might be missing that game if he's injured, so we'll have to wait and see on that. But ultimately, I just think in terms of timing, it's not too late to bring Alvarez in, but I think if I was going this week, I would probably buy Morris instead because Everton away and Burnley at home is about as good as it's going to get for a double game week fixture. The only thing I would think about is how long you might have to hold him afterwards because Spurs are home, okay, it's it's tricky, but you've just had a good double game. And then it's Forest away afterwards, so maybe you could convince yourself that game week's eight and nine are fine. After that, I'd probably want to start to look to get rid of him. Aston Villa away, Liverpool at home, Man United away. I'm not convinced he's going to get a huge amount of points unless he keeps getting penalties. So it probably is a short-term move. You need to think about... The fact it's going to use a transfer to bring him in, possibly use one to take him back out. What else is that going to stop you doing? Is there other players that you'd want to bring in instead? Um, but I'd also think about his price and whether that allows you to do anything else. Because at 5.5 million, part of the appeal is that value it lets you to spend, uh, lets you spend elsewhere. So if by bringing him in, you've got one less good player taken up in your first 11 but you've got 10 other brilliant players because you've got so much cash to spend that could be another reason to kind of think of keeping hold of him a little bit longer term again cliche everyone's team is different but i think he's perfectly fine to bring in this week and there's going to be lots of questions about that it's just how long do you keep him afterwards like if we go back to alvarez for example like i'm perfectly happy to have him right i think wolves away is fine arsenal away he could get something brian at home's fine man united away is probably fine and bournemouth at home but i think because you've already missed that forest at home fixture there's not that rush to bring him in you could wait until game week nine so maybe you keep morris for the next two weeks and then look to bring alvarez in and by that point things might have changed all it takes is one alvarez bench in and suddenly you're thinking about him is even different so the kind of short summary to end this little section on Carlton Morris, I think he's a perfectly reasonable short-term punt. If you get stuck with him afterwards, it's not great, but he is going to allow you to spend money elsewhere. But just think about what those transfers, or sorry, what the transfers on him are going to stop you doing elsewhere. His underlying numbers aren't great, but the fixtures are decent. And I think the fact that lots of people did just bring Alvarez in means Morris ownership is going to be lower than it would have been had Nicholas Jackson been doing fine. Because obviously everyone's just bought Alvarez, so they now don't want to move to Morris. So I think as an early season punt, looks great. Some people are even going to think about captain in him. I need to think on that a little bit more, and I'll give my thoughts on that later on in the week. But as an option to transfer in, 
quite like it this week. So I think we've got to talk about Newcastle defence. They won 8-0 against Sheffield United yesterday. Trippier had three assists. Dan Burns scored a goal. Botman scored his first Newcastle goal as well. And poor old Cher didn't get an attack and return, but obviously he still picked up the clean sheet. So if you went for him, I'm sure you're a little bit frustrated right now, but I don't think that was a bad decision. Overall, the defense just looks good. And I know it feels like every week on the early thoughts video, I'm always talking about the player that's just scored loads of points. But in this case, if I can defend myself a little bit, I did talk about Newcastle defense in game week four and how it might be worth looking at having a plan from game week five onwards because the fixtures turn and their underlying stats look great. Now, I didn't think they were necessarily needed for Brentford at home, so I thought that might be a difficult fixture, but they did what they do best and defended really well, got the clean sheet there, won against Sheffield United away. Now they've got Burnley at home, West Ham away, Palace at home, Wolves away, uh, Arsenal at home in game week 11 and Bournemouth away in game week 12. The only games there where I think they might struggle to keep a clean sheet are probably Arsenal at home, which most teams do anyway, and maybe West Ham away, because I think they've made so many good improvements to that squad. Outside of that, really good chance of clean sheets in most of those games. So I think, first question I'm going to get asked a lot this week, is it still worth bringing in Newcastle defenders? Absolutely. Second question, who's the best option? I think Trippier proved yesterday that he is worth that premium if it doesn't stop you making other transfers that you want to do. And that is something you'll have to look at for your individual teams because there is a big price difference between him and Botman. So it's easy to say Trippier is the best option, but if it stops you doing loads of other good moves you want to make, um, then you know, you'd know you have to decide whether or not it's worth it. But I think if money was no object, Trippier is the one I would go for. Between Cher and Botman... Obviously, it, it looks bad now, having said that I thought Cher had more attacking threat, but Botman's gone and scored. Um, the thing between those two now is their price is getting quite similar. So Botman is 4.7 and Cher is 5. I think if you got Botman at 4.5 uh, million or 4.6, then fair enough, you take that saving. But the closer Botman gets to Cher's price... I probably would just take Fabian share, but it's quite close. If you want to save money, then Botman's a really good option. One thing I like about him is his bonus points. I think he's had, let me just double check how many he's had here, uh, four so far. So one against Aston Villa first game and then three in the Brentford game. None yesterday, but obviously he's still got his goal, so it doesn't really matter. With share, he has had one, only one bonus point so far. So I don't know, it's close. Do you take the goal threat or do you take the possible slightly higher chance of getting bonus that's a decision you can make but i think both are good options and if you are priced out of trippier then having botman and share is perfectly fine that's another question that people are going to ask what do you think about the double up i think it looks really good because of the amount of good fixtures they've got to come like, i wouldn't mind playing my newcastle defenders in any game apart from arsenal at home but even if i got to that week and had to play them it wouldn't be the end of the world after game week 12 let me just double check uh, they've got Chelsea at home, Man United at home, Everton away, Spurs away. I mean, that is quite tricky. Obviously, Chelsea are struggling to score goals. Man United don't tend to struggle to score. They struggle to win games and keep clean sheets, but they usually do score. Then Everton away is okay. Spurs away is going to be tricky as well. But we're talking seven game weeks away. So much will change between now and then. It's probably not worth worrying about too much. And also, if you had to keep them through those fixtures, they get... Uh, the fixtures get a bit better afterwards anyway. You've then got Fulham at home, Luton away, Forest at home, gave me 17 to 18. So, yeah, I think Newcastle defenders are perfectly fine to bring in this week. Obviously, you've got, for some of you, you'll have that decision of getting a Luton forward or a Newcastle defender. I mean, arguably, for the long term, the Newcastle defender is probably better. And someone like Trippier, if they can keep a clean sheet against Burnley, which I think looks pretty good, and he can get another attack in return, he could easily match what Morris could do anyway so i think as a long-term move trippier might be the slightly higher priority but again a lot of it's going to come down to wildcard decisions now i've seen a lot of people thinking about eight nine and ten so if you're going to wildcard in eight i would definitely take the punt on the double game weaker and then obviously wildcard out of it you can get trippier later the only thing to be conscious of is the prices are going up trippier and bottom i think both went up in price overnight they may get another price rise before this week that's the only thing i've started to think about for my own wildcard it's all well and good waiting until game week 10 because of fixture swings. But in the meantime, I'm losing money on players that I own and I'm not gaining money from those players that I don't own that are going up in price. So that is worth considering, but I don't think that's enough for me to be a reason to use the wild card. But yeah, Newcastle defense, really good. Trippier, the best option if you can afford it. Double up is more than fine. A triple up, maybe. The only thing I would be conscious of with that 
is if one of Isaac or Wilson gets injured or you just want to take a punt on one of those or you want to go for Gordon, for example, who did really well yesterday too, then you lock yourself out of doing that. And I think there's enough other good defenders that most people own, like Estepinian from game week 10, Arsenal defenders from game week 10, Udogi for game weeks uh, 8 and 9, that you don't necessarily need a triple up on Newcastle. But I wouldn't uh, count it out completely. If you want to go there... I don't think it's too much of an exaggeration. Sorry, I don't think it's too much of a knee jerk based on what just happened to say it's a good idea. I think it is, but I will probably go for a double up at most. So I've got Issa Kabori up on screen, but really I just want to use this as an opportunity to discuss whether or not there's any other double game week players that we should be looking to bring in outside of Carl Tomaris, because I do think he'll be the most popular. Some people might have been looking at Lyle Foster from Burnley, but he went and got a red card, so he's going to miss the first game of the double. Probably not worth bringing in because it's just a single game week, even though it's looting away, which isn't bad. I would probably just ignore him. In terms of the defenders, my general opinion is if you've got them already play them otherwise i wouldn't bring them in obviously people are going to be looking at kabori or bell at luton kabori has missed one game this season but he's played since then so he should be okay and then at burnley you've got the likes of bayer uh, roberts and taylor as well who's played i think the last couple let's just double check that uh good old charlie taylor yeah he started the last two against forest away and man united at home so he could be an option as well and like I said, if I've got them, I play them in the double, but I don't think I would bring them in. Obviously, there are always going to be certain situations where it might be worthwhile. Let's say you've got Ben Chilwell, and for whatever reason, you don't want to bring a Newcastle defender in this week, and you want to massively downgrade him to upgrade an attacker, then maybe you go to a double game week in that specific situation, so you've got the money. But for most people, I just wouldn't bring them in. Take Luton defenders. Everton away, Burnley at home, pretty good. I'm actually quite excited to play Kabori this week. But then, I've, then he's got Spurs at home, Forest away, Villa away, Liverpool at home, Man United away. I think there's zero clean sheets in any of those games. And yes, he might be attacking when he plays, but he's not someone that I'm planning to put into my first 11 in any game week unless I'm absolutely forced into it. And I think it's a similar situation for Burnley. They actually do have better long-term fixtures. So actually, although their double is worse this week, they might be better for your squad longer term but it's still a case that over the next few weeks you're probably not going to want to play them even with the double they've got newcastle away is almost certainly just a one or two pointer Luton away is pretty good but then it's chelsea at home and look the way that burnley are playing right now they might get a result in that game because they're very good in possession at holding the ball we saw that against man united but it's still not a fixture you target right same with brentford away burnley away it's okay yes maybe but I just don't know if I'd want to be playing a Burnley defender. That's the overarching kind of point here. Arsenal away game week 12, West Ham at home game week 13. I, again, if you've got them or if you're wildcarding right now and you need a cheap defender and you want to keep them for the long term to provide you that value to spend elsewhere, maybe you go for them. But I just wouldn't be looking to buy them. So yeah, play them if you've got them. Don't buy them otherwise. In terms of other attackers, I think I would pretty much ignore everyone at Luton outside of Morris. Burnley do have some quite exciting players. Um, this guy, for example, Kolioshu. Have I maybe pronounced that almost correct? I think he looks quite good from watching the, the last couple of Burnley games. But it's that end product. Is it there? And I think that's always a worry with players like this from a team like Burnley. So I think he looks exciting to watch. But is, is he going to go and get you those assists and goals? Probably not. I mean, you look at the underlying numbers last few games. 0.07 XG against Man United. 0.02 against, uh, expected assists, sorry. Even against Forest, zero expected goals. 0.03 expected assists. He might look exciting, but I just don't think we can go there. Um, same with kind of Amdouni. He started every single game for Burnley so far. His numbers are a little bit better. And they weren't too bad against Man United. But I don't know. I just... Is it worth holding a forward spot or a midfield spot of a Burnley player? I just don't think it is. And look, if you've not watched my channel before this season, I usually get very excited about double game weeks. No matter who the teams are, I always want one or two from them. And I've got Kabori. I really wish I could get Morris this week, but I don't think I can sell Alvarez. I just think generally, even I have to put the handbrake on for this and just say it's Luton and Burnley. We don't want to carry those players for long. If you're wildcard in game week eight, that's different. Then I really like the punt because a lot of people um, aren't going to go for it. 
But outside of that, we probably just have to ignore for the most part. I'm just going to go through some of my notes from the weekend. Just a word of caution from the Arsenal versus Spurs game that Madison and Saka were both substituted early, which might mean they've got slight knocks. I'm not saying that is definite. I'm not saying they're out for game week seven, far from it. But I think given the way the game was going, neither would have been substituted if there wasn't a little bit of concern there. So with Madison, he went down. I think it was a knee injury. And initially, it looked really bad, like he was definitely going to be substituted. But he did end up coming on and playing a little bit longer. But then he was subbed off. And I just think Ange Postacoglu would have kept him on if he was fine. So again, it might just be a precaution, but worth taking note. And similar with Saka, because he always gets kicked around, right? Lots of fouls on him and stuff like that. He did seem to be limping when he walked off. Now, we know he's got a bit of a long-term issue that he's dealing with which isn't affecting him starting games but there is something there so maybe it was to do with that and he'll be fine by the weekend but i just thought i'd make note of that and let you know they'll probably both be fine for seven hopefully they will be but they did both get substituted early uh, Gusta got a straight red card he's going to miss three games one of them will be in the cup but he is going to miss game week seven and eight in the premier league so a little bit frustrating because that's the last two good games that chelsea have fulham away and burnley away potentially they weren't going to get any clean sheets anyway but i think that is going to be a bit of a frustration for people that own him i think in particularly in game week eight it would have been nice to play him um, whether or not you need to get rid of him straight away really depends on what other issues you've got to deal with like if you've got chilwell and gusto well you don't even know if chilwell is going to start the next game and obviously he's a lot more money which allows you to get to better defenders if you've got gusto and not much money in the bank there's not a huge amount of players you could go to if you were aiming to play or planning to play him in game week seven then maybe in that case you could move to a Luton defender potentially someone like Kabori or Bell um, but either way Gusto longer term is probably not going to be a great option if we look at the Chelsea fixtures uh, like I said Fulham away Burnley away but then it's Arsenal at home Brentford at home Spurs away Man City at home Newcastle away Brighton at home Man United away I don't think there's any clean sheets pretty much for Chelsea after game week night I mean they have defended quite well in terms of limiting chances of the opponents they haven't done that badly but that's still quite a bad fixture run. So, yeah, Gusto is probably no good for you anymore. And obviously, Reese James will be back at some point. We don't yet know when that's going to be. The only knock-on for that red card is it potentially means Chilwell is going to start the next game. He hasn't started the last two. We know Pochettino has been using him in left wing position. He hasn't used him as a left back at all in the Premier League so far, apart from when he subbed on for Colwell, um, not the week just gone, but the one before. But with Gusto out, Chelsea really don't have that many defenders available. And unless Reese James is back and they're going to stick him straight into the team, and that's never gone wrong before, I feel like Chilwell might actually start because Dizazi has been playing right centre back, Thiago Silva left centre back, and Colwell left back, and obviously Gusto's on the right. But Gusto's not there now, he's not available. So potentially Dizazi will play right back, and then you have Thiago Silva right centre back, and Colwell left centre back which leaves a left-back spot open for Chilwell. Now, I had a lot of discussion with other people kind of last night about whether or not that will happen. I'm not saying there's not other ways that Pochettino can play it, but I think most of them are overthinking. Like, thinking that Chilwell, uh, sorry, that Kukurea, for example, will come in ahead of Chilwell, I just don't see that happening. Someone like Malang Saar, Pochettino didn't even know who he was in a press conference not too long ago, so I don't see him starting. You know, you've got players like Matson that could play, but are they going to play left back ahead of Chilwell? I'm just not convinced. The only plausible option I see is Caicedo could play right back, which means Pochettino leaves the other three centre backs where they've been playing in every game so far. And Caicedo has played right back for Brighton before and done a pretty good job. I think he did it against Man United once, and I was pretty impressed. But again, you do that, you take him out of midfield, right? And it's not like things are going well for Chelsea. So I just feel like. I mean, I don't really get too much why Chilwell hasn't been playing. But to be fair, Colwell's done quite well at left-back, so maybe that's just the case. It's clear that Pochettino doesn't really want to play him there. But I think in this case, he's probably going to have to. So if you've got Chilwell and you don't want to use a transfer on him, maybe you could hold on to him for this week. But it's worth saying he's he's missed the last two, been substituted on, yellow card in both, zero-pointer. 
he's not someone you need long term. So if you've got a spare transfer, whether or not he's going to play against Fulham, I'd probably look at getting rid. Jackson suspended for game week seven. I kind of already touched on that. Five yellow cards in six games. Absolutely ridiculous, especially for a forward. Uh, so he's just got to go, right? I've just said with Gusto, you got Burnley away after Fulham, at, uh, Fulham away. Then the fixtures get pretty bad. You're not going to want to hold on to him. Get rid of him. If you don't want to go for Morris, the, the answer is probably still Alvarez. But I'd look at someone like Wilson if you want to take a punt. Maybe Hoyland because of the fixtures. There are other kind of forwards out there that you could go for. Just looking at the fixtures for game week seven, I'm not sure there's many other options. Awani, possibly. Got Brentford at home this week. And I think the fixtures are quite good afterwards. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, Palace away, Luton at home. So it's a short-term punt. He could be decent. But yeah, Alvarez is probably the choice if you don't want to go for Morris. Um, Diaz and Nunez started again, even though they, I think they both started in midweek. So that looks to be the first choice front three for Liverpool right now. Diaz, Nunez and Salah for anyone that wants to take a punt outside of Mo Salah. Maybe those two could be looked at. And I think Klopp made a comment about Nunez's improvement in defensive um, ability or, or performance as well so that can only bode well for his minutes going forward because one of the reasons to go for Gakpo is because of how good he is in terms of pressing and stuff like that but if Nunez is going to keep starting I really love him as an option especially for his price Son played number nine again I think that's going to continue Postacoglu said after the game I think it was um, how well he's done in that place it's now three games in a row I don't think there's really an issue with that moving forward Brennan Johnson played on the left uh, Solomon can play there as well even though they've lost Perisic there's not a major need for Son to go back to that position and I think he is just much better than Richarlison as a number nine so I'm quite hopeful he remains there you got Liverpool at home Luton away Fulham at home Three pretty good fixtures. I wouldn't usually target Liverpool at home, but if you need to make a midfield transfer, Son's not that bad. So look out for that. Rodri got a red card. He's going to miss the Arsenal game. That's obviously good for my, uh, Arsenal players. I don't think it suddenly makes them much better than they were before, but it is a bit of a positive. Johnson and Turner started again. I think if you own both of them, don't panic just yet. I think it's, t it's probably a case of you keep the shirt if you keep performing well. If you stop performing well, you're gone straight away. And then obviously Henderson um, and Vlahadamos roughly right could come in for forest and then brighton heavy rotation i know matoma came on and did great that's brilliant but ultimately we know the is going to rotate pretty much everyone in that team outside of probably lewis dunk if he's fit i think they're just worth avoiding if you don't already own them like sgp is someone i got in my team he's a machine right he played in europe then he played at the weekend i will want him from game week 10 onwards but in terms of ferguson jao pedro march uh, Matoma etc I'm probably going to mostly avoid Matoma will be a tempter for anyone that wild cards in game week 10 because Brighton's fixtures are so good afterwards but before that I just wouldn't look at buying any of them so there's some of my thoughts from the weekend plus an early look at those watch list players uh, I will cover anything else we've missed in the transfer tips video game week preview team selection and final thoughts which are all coming up ahead of the game week 7 deadline if you haven't already checked out fantasy football hub like I said 30% off at the moment 7 day free trial and the win your mini league or your money back offer is going to finish uh, after the game week seven deadline so if you want to sign up now is a good time to do that all the terms and conditions are in the description below otherwise give the video a like if you enjoyed it hit that subscribe button and if you're listening on podcast make sure to rate five stars otherwise i'll catch you tomorrow